My name is Simon and this is how to build a racing car. This episode will be a quick overview of the first test we did recently with my car at a closed off car park. I wanted to shake the car down and make sure that mechanically it's all okay and that I would be able to drive it comfortably. The car is mechanically complete though there are a few things I'll need to do before it races, uh, particularly there's a lot to do on the bodywork, uh, but I decided to fit it anyway just to get a sense of how it would look on the car. Once we got the car off the trailer there really wasn't anything to do apart from simply drive it. Despite it being a racing car it all boils down to the same controls as a normal car, so just like a normal car I started it up, pressed in the clutch and put it into gear. Simple. This didn't go as planned. It turns out that the clutch slave cylinder wasn't quite engaging the clutch fully so the gearbox and engine were still coupled. It didn't help either that I got reverse rather than a forward gear. Once we had that sorted out though, things went a lot better. The first run, I just drove around the car park. When we were comfortable that it was all working, we decided to run a couple of tests. First we placed a plank of wood on the ground to actuate the car's suspension. My data logger doesn't have suspension potentiometers, so the next best thing was just having the camera observe the suspension movement. It goes up and down, so I guess that can be called a success. We also tried out the brakes, which turned out to take a lot more force than I had expected. I was having to put pretty much everything I could muster into the pedal, and even then I was only able to lock up the front left wheel. I'll need to take a closer look at this before it hits the track. It could be something as simple as having a bit of oil or grease on the brake pads. The discs were clean, but the pads hadn't been checked, so there's the possibility that they got something on them during the build. As far as data logging goes, I got some during the course of the test, lateral acceleration, speed, oil temperature and pressure. The engine RPM and steering position sensors were connected but not functioning, so I'll need to get to the bottom of that. I also got some data on myself. I wore a heart rate monitor to see how hard I was working during the test. Typically my heart rate is around 180 BPM when I go running, 150 BPM mountain bike riding, and it was about 110 BPM during this test, so I wasn't working particularly hard compared to what a normal race situation would be. I know anecdotally that I'm working pretty hard when I'm competing in a race, so it'll be interesting to see how it compares. Anyway, I know that was a short one, but it was an important milestone for the car to have driven it. The test didn't throw up anything fundamentally wrong with the car. I've still got a lot to get done before the first round in February next year, but having this completed is a big step in the right direction. One more thing before I wrap up. I'm playing around with some different livery designs for the car. Here are a few that I've come up with. Let me know in the comments what you think I should go with. Uh, I'm not a graphical designer and have no idea how to make it look good, so I'd appreciate the feedback. That's it for this episode. I'll leave you with a bit more footage of the test.